Today we're going to show how you can use the Twitter API in your bubble app. There's a lot of different things we can do with the Twitter API, but a really simple use case is just posting tweets either from your account uh, or from one of your users' accounts to Twitter. So a couple of workflows going on, which we'll go through in a bit, but you can see here I've just typed it begins uh, into the input box, and we should see this come through on my Twitter account directly from Bubble. So let's go through what we need to set up to get this up and running. Now you could use the API connector to work with the Twitter API. I did try that, I found it quite difficult to be honest. What I think is an easier solution is to use Pathfix. They're a really cool SaaS company that really make it easy to integrate uh, for bubble builders with various APIs. You can see here that they have a bunch of different uh, integrations. We're gonna be looking at the Twitter one. Uh, this is not a sponsored video. I just found them useful. They're really helpful in support and they have a really generous free plan. So I would recommend them. And the first thing we need to do if we want to integrate with Twitter using Pathfix is we need to sign up for an account. Uh, so let's do that now. Okay, so once you've answered some basic questions, you're gonna be brought to this dashboard area and you're gonna click on add application. We're then gonna choose Twitter from a group of applications. Before we do that, we're gonna put in some, some basic details. I'm just gonna call this demo video and we don't need to answer the event callback URL at the moment. Click save. And now that is set up, we can choose which integration specifically uh, we want to, to look at. So we're gonna click on demo video and we're brought into this area here. And what's really important here is, uh, first of all, that we pick Twitter. So let's go down to that now. You can see there's quite a few integrations going on. Let's choose the Twitter one. We're gonna be asked for two keys. We're gonna be asked for the client ID and the client secret. You need to get these from the Twitter developer portal. So I've already set up a Twitter developer account and I'm just gonna give a brief overview of what you need to look out for once you do have that set up. The first thing is that the default access level you get from the Twitter developer platform is called Essential. Now, to make full use of the Pathfix integration, you're going to need to apply for elevated access. There's tutorials elsewhere on how to do that, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but it's quite straightforward. It can take up to 48 hours, although it's a lot quicker for me. You still might be able to get certain things to work even without that, but I do recommend doing it. Once you have this set up, you can start setting up projects and apps. There's a bit of a hierarchy here. And a couple of things you really need to look out for. First of all, is this user authentication settings section at the bottom of each uh, apps kind of uh, portal. Click on edit there. You need to have OAuth 1.08 ticked. You do not need 2.0 ticked, you need 1.08 ticked. You also need to have request email from users optional. That needs to be ticked. And in terms of app permissions, read and write and direct message all uh, checked as well, or at least this one here, I should say. And then finally, a couple of general authentication settings here we need to put in. Uh, for callback URL or redirect URL, you need to copy this URL here and slot that into uh, this section. Website URL, just put in your own app's website and similar for terms of service and for privacy policy. So that's what you need to fill out on the actual app screen itself. Uh, in terms of getting the keys, uh, which you'll need to do in order to put in here and continue on with the path like setup, get that from here. I'm not gonna show these now for obvious security reasons, but click on that, get your keys and paste them into Pathfix right here. Once you've done that, you can click down save, assuming you have your keys in, and then it's time to go back to our bubble editor. And we're gonna install two plugins. We're gonna install the Pathfix OAuth connector, and we're gonna install the Twitter OAuth plugin, both from Pathfix, both three. Uh, once you have these installed, what you're gonna to wanna to do is input some more keys. You can see here there's a section for public X partner key, public key dev, and X partner key dev. We get these from the Pathfix dashboard. So again, if we go back into Pathfix and we go down to keys, you're gonna have your own custom keys here. So get those, paste them into the relevant section here. It's a similar enough story for the Twitter OAuth plugin. And then we're nearly there in terms of configuring Pathfix and accessing the Twitter API. So with that, we can go back into our bubble editor on the design tab. And what you will see is there's two new visual elements available to you. There's a Pathfix connector and also the Pathfix custom visual element. We're gonna use the Pathfix connector element. I've dragged it onto the screen here. And if you click on it, what you'll see is there's a number of different integrations you can choose from. But the easiest thing to do is simply take all providers configured in my Pathfix account. This essentially means that they're going to take everything you've configured in Pathfix and just make that available. So once you leave that there, it's going to pop up on your screen. If we go to preview, we're gonna see what this likes, this looks like. And what you can do is, it'll take a second to appear. 
but you can connect your Twitter account. So let's just do that now. So if I click on connect here, I'm going to be presented with this pop-up. And this is essentially Patrick asking for permission uh, to connect me to my Twitter account. So you can see your authorized TweetPal, which again is the name of the app I created in the Twitter developer portal to access your account. Has quite a range of permissions. Uh, it's obviously a bit of a security angle to, to watch for here, but obviously if you're going to make the app, that's up to you. Click on authorize app, and then you will see that your account is now connected to Twitter. So a while back, I posted a tweet, and that again is connected to my Twitter account. So let's just do that again. Click tweet, and now that it's connected to my Twitter account, we should see this pop up here. And sure enough, hello world appearing. So that's one of the things we can do with the Twitter API. Let's look at a couple of other things that are possible using Patrick's and Twitter API. A good place to start is back in the workflow section. So I have a really simple workflow set up here where when button tweet is clicked, I'm using this Twitter post tweet action that's now available thanks to Patrick's. So again, going into plugins, we have all these things here. We have add member to list, like post tweet, and various things that involve attaching media, reply to tweet, retweet, unlike, etc. And it's really basic. You're on a post tweet one. You put in the current user's unique ID as this parameter here. And then I have an input section and I'm just taking the value from that and posting it as a tweet. So that's probably the most simple thing you can do uh, with the Twitter API and Patfix. But it's not the only thing we can do. So if we go back into our design tab, uh, we add another group here, we can start pulling in some data from our own Twitter account. So let's do that now. Let's just give this a bit of a background so it's a bit more obvious what we're doing. And we'll make it a row and we'll make it non-fixed width. So if we put in a piece of text here, we can dynamically pull data from the Twitter API. So we're going to go to insert, we're going to go get data from an external API. And we're going to choose the Twitter get profile. Uh, we're going to put in current user's unique ID here, which is important. It will not work without this. So let's just do that now. And then we can choose from a range of options here. We can get ID, name, screen name. I'm going to go with screen name, which is essentially my Twitter handle. This could be useful for profile um, pages or something like that, maybe. But hopefully when we refresh this page now, we should see that group with my Twitter handle inside of it. And sure enough, you can see their AC no code, which is my Twitter handle, appearing in the group there. So that's one way you can use the Twitter API to pull some data. And there are plenty more. You can see here again, if we just copy and paste this, there's a range of different things we can pull in here just from this get profile alone between follower count, friend count, all that kind of stuff. So I would encourage you to play around with that and pull in whatever you're interested in. But that's it from this tutorial. Hope this has been useful and you do explore the Twitter API yourself. Like I said, I think it's a great way to add another tool to your Google app. And if you'd like to see more videos on more advanced world concepts, please do subscribe to the channel.